Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a wear test and a review of the Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. This super light green bottle is really getting blown out by my lights here, but you're gonna see it up close and personal in a second. If you're new here, the way that these wear tests work is we look at a couple of different things. We're looking at level of coverage, we're looking at the consistency of the product, of course it's wearability via timestamps that I take throughout the day during the wear test, and then I try to compare it to something else on the market and let you know which one I prefer. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the timestamped wear test for you guys. So here is the bottle up close and personal. Um, my shade is 12B Fair Beige. You can see here, it is super liquidy, super, super liquidy consistency, which surprised me with that little squeezy tube tip. I was expecting it to be a little bit thicker. I'm using a brush because I find that sponges with these really liquidy foundations just suck up too much of it and don't blend it out very well. I also just find generally that really liquidy foundations like this are difficult to spread out, blend out evenly. Um, and that I end up always having to go back in with a little bit more like you see me doing here to get full coverage on my face. As for the color match here, it is looking a little bit lighter because you can see there on my chest and arms, um, fresh sunless tanner application. So be aware of that. It is going to depend on how dark you like your fake tan if you do that. You can also see me there blending it out a little bit with my fingers in the areas of my face where I've got the largest pores. I did find that pretty effective. So you can see here up close, coverage is medium. You can still see a little bit there on my chin. You can see those blue veins along my jawline and there in the middle of my cheeks. So it's definitely more than the sheer coverage foundations, which you guys know me, I don't really think they're worth the time, um, but also definitely not tilting into full coverage foundation. So I did go in with a little bit more and try to build that up along my jawline and that actually worked out okay. So you can see this was at 11.15 a.m., our first time stamp, and I put on those other products as well, some powder, blush, bronzer, highlighter. So three hours later, our first check-in, so you can see I've got that makeup on. I'm very shiny. That's what I'm pointing out to you here, and I'm going to zoom you in. So that gleam on my cheekbone that I'm going to show you right here, that is highlighter, so we're ignoring that. The oil that I'm looking at is more where I'm pointing to now, kind of around the nose, around those mobile parts of my face the chin, my, my forehead was very shiny as well. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I haven't lost coverage yet, but I'm surprised that I'm this shiny just three hours in. So I'm gonna do the usual here. We're gonna take the oil blot, and um, what you're gonna see here, I think, in this timestamp is, what shocked me is usually the oil blot will only just pull the oil off my face. It always is disappointing to me when I go in with an oil blot, and the oil blot is pulling the product off my face. So you can see here, kind of on the right side of my nose, where I went in with that blot sheet, it pulled the product off and I can see some of my redness starting to come through. So a pretty decent amount of oil coming off at the three hour mark. Now we're at four o'clock, so almost five hours in. It still looks okay, I'm shiny again. Um, the overall look is definitely just not as fresh as it was before. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in and you can see what we're working with. This Hydroflex serum, it bills itself as having like a blurring effect for pores and fine lines. I'm not really seeing that, maybe a little bit. Um, it's certainly not sinking into my pores, so if that is what it's going for, then that is working. It's not sinking into my pores or fine lines, which is a plus, but it's wearing off, it's not looking very fresh, and it's only been five hours. So there you can see crazy amounts of oil coming off my face at this check-in. And there again, I felt like more of the product was coming off, and this time too, I was starting to lose that product on my chin. So 6.15, so about seven hours total. This is my last check-in because I kind of just gave up on it. I feel like, again, like I look okay, but just not fresh. It's, it's like all of the oil blotting in the world and even maybe putting on some fresh powder is not saving it at this point. So the close-up, here you can see the coverage is pretty much gone on my chin. My forehead is looking shiny. I feel like it's definitely kind of just worn off there underneath where you can see the bronzer and the highlighter and there especially around my nose where I was trying to remove that oil. The coverage is pretty much gone and um, the shine factor, the touch test, you know, when you tap your face and you can kind of pull some of the gunk off just on your fingertip. I was very ready seven hours in to get this off my face. So overall, really not too impressed with this product, but 
I always say that with the disclaimer that I have very oily skin and when it comes to these sheer to medium coverage foundations, they're just not for me. If I'm going in with a face of makeup, I want it to be worth my time. So it does live up to the promise of sort of that Hydroflex poor blurring, I won't even call it poor blurring, but it does not settle into your skin. Um, you're not gonna have like those, those really obvious pores. It's not gonna settle into your fine lines and creases. You're not gonna have any of that, but the longevity of this was really, really poor. It definitely didn't hold up very well in terms of coverage, in terms of oil control. Okay, so what other products are on the market that compare to the Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation? Being that this is kind of a new thing in foundations, I've only tried so many of them, but in my beauty drawer, the most comparable product was the Ilia Beauty True Skin Serum Foundation. I usually try to do apples to apples here in terms of cost. Wasn't able to do that for you guys this time. The Ilia Beauty is $54 a bottle, while the Tarte is $39. Both are clean beauty products. Both are light to medium coverage. The only thing that has Ilio winning in my book is I recall this one having a nicer finish on my skin. And I remember actually feeling kind of surprised for a clean beauty product how well it held up to my oils. Neither of these are going to hold up the way a more full coverage, more robust foundation is going to. So if you are somebody who is in the market for a serum foundation that is more full coverage, I can't say enough good things about the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation that I reviewed for you guys a few months ago. This one is definitely going to be more along the lines of your full coverage foundations that you're used to. These two falling into that more light to medium, sort of sheer skin-like finish, um, maybe better for the summer months if you don't have super oily skin. If you do have oily skin or you're wanting something that's more full coverage traditional foundation, I recommend the Clinique. So that is it for this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave questions and comments below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.